Okay, so we have our first event this Saturday. All right, this Saturday. And we pretty much, we have like 95% of the equipment. Um, I guess where we want to get started is the Touch Picks um, app. So yeah. one of the, I guess, one of the main issues we having is, well, not issues, but Concern. yeah, concerns. There you go. Mm -hmm. So we did like test events here at the house. And I noticed that once I closed the event, like I have no access to it anymore. And so we were trying to figure out if we're at the event and it's done and they want all of their videos, like on a flash drive or a thumb drive, okay. like how, where would we go to upload that information onto the drive? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's actually a really great topic and we can jump into depth. And exact. It, what I can do since I have both of you here right now is I can go into my uh, touch picks, I believe. Yeah, I could jump into my touch picks, create an event, right? Go on my phone, okay. show you the application on my phone by sharing my phone screen on the laptop, recording a quick video, then closing the event. But before I close the event, there's something I want to share with you. Uh, that's going to really help you in the future because I'm going to show you guys how to access the raw files, download those to your iPhone because once you close the event, those raw files will no longer be available. So we have to do it in that sequence. And then I'll show you guys uh, by continuously sharing my computer screen on how to send the client the QR code so they have access to the entire gallery from that event. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So we don't necessarily need like a thumb drive. They can just access it themselves with a QR code. Exactly. It's going it's okay. to be a link that you'll email to them the same night or the very next day in the morning as soon as you guys can get to it. So with okay. that being said, that sounds like good, a good amount of homework to cover right now. Do you guys want to get started on that portion right away or do you guys want to cover uh, some questions first or just, just get started on that, uh, that first topic? I think the main issues is that I know there, there, there can be setbacks, little, you know, things that can go wrong with the software. Mm -hmm. And so I, we just want to know generally what setbacks have you encountered, you know, and how can we resolve that? Yeah. So one common thing is, and, and I'm going to show you everything that I'm explaining verbally, I'm going to give you guys a visual so you guys can go with a backup plan just in case. One of the things okay. I've experienced that I don't like is that when I'm recording a video and the video is set to be for over 20 seconds and it ends up being only 16 seconds, there's an issue there going on because 16 seconds is way too short when it comes to producing a 360 video. You want your videos to be over 21 seconds and that's including the entire video from the slow-mo to the uh, re-loop to the boomerang, okay? So let's go ahead and, um, and so that's primarily one thing that can go wrong. And, and I'm going to show you guys how I troubleshoot and what I do if that troubleshooting st uh, steps don't work. I'm going to show you guys my plan B. Um, and I hope that this, this helps you guys like it's helped me out in the past. And this saves me time while I'm at the event too, if this occurs. Okay. Another thing. When we... Go ahead. Go ahead. When we were doing it here, we had like 20.45, 20 20.12. 20 it was varying. Yeah. Okay. That's not too bad. Actually, that's that's also somewhat of a sweet spot. Um, so that's one thing. Okay. Another thing is sometimes the iPad sharing station will take forever and ever to get that video from your phone to the iPad sharing station where your attendees can airdrop or scan the QR code. So that right there is a pain in the butt. Uh, so what I usually do is I refresh the app. I open it back up on the iPad or I'll power cycle the iPad. And sometimes it's the actual application and not the iPad or the Wi-Fi signal. Sometimes it's a very low Wi-Fi signal. So the upload speed takes a while to, from the video to get from the phone to the iPad sharing station. That's not such, of a, uh, such a big issue, uh, guys, because Remember that the video is going to be available on your phone and you can still use your phone as an iPad sharing station in a way because you're able to airdrop that video directly from your phone to the folks that just got off the photo booth, off the 360 booth. 
So that's okay. not an issue. You can send those right away as soon as it finishes rendering on your phone. That's uh, that's something that is uh, that's not gonna stop you or slow you down. However, it is convenient when your iPad sharing station is working like it should. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and go ahead. Um, I, I'm I'm hearing you guys out. And if I go over something too fast, slow me down, please. Okay. Okay. Now, um, quick question: If if we're using, say, a television and intend on having them scan the QR code off the television, opposed to like a iPad, um, an air dropping method. Uh, say if we encounter the issues where we have to, to uh, like restart the app, it just do it on the on the phone as you spoke previously. Yeah, so you would restart it on the phone and because you haven't closed that event by scanning the QR code, it's it's simply going to act as a refresh when you start the app again. Um, so if you are planning to use an external screen, which I have moved away from, it, it'll be the same thing. You So correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Are you guys going to be using an iPhone and then an Apple TV to your external monitor? It's an iPhone and an LG Samsung Thank TV. You. Okay, so it's a smart TV, so it synchronizes with yeah. your uh, iPhone through the uh, AirPlay uh, feature. Yeah, through screen mirroring or yeah, an AirPlay. AirPlay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's just like you guys said right now. Those those would be the exact steps you guys would take. It would have to be closing the app, reopening up the app, and then synchronizing the phone to your LG TV again to use the AirDrop feature. Uh, keep in mind, guys, also that when you scan the QR code from the TV. The QR code method can be somewhat sluggish as far as how long it takes the video to get downloaded to the phone. And once it gets downloaded to the Android phone or the iPhone, they still have to go into their files. And within that file folder, they have to take that video and save it to their album. So when they click on photos, they see the 360 video on their album and not have to look for it in a file folder because it's that's how the QR code works. It, it, it puts it in a file folder as a download versus directly to their gallery if you're using AirDrop. So if you're using AirDrop, that's the beauty of it. You can just send it to the client. It takes two seconds and they have the video right there on their gallery. Android users, we really don't have much of an option but to scan the QR code. And like I said, when you scan that QR code, it's gonna download that uh, video. They'll see it on their phone and then in their phone, they'll have to download the video actually into their phone and then they'll have to go into a file folder and from that file folder they'll be able to download that file into their album so it's like an extra almost three steps if you think about it using android devices okay. it's doable it's just extra steps so right when we film the video they okay. can immediately take their iphone to our iphone and airdrop it just like that almost so once 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 you guys record the attendees, the arm goes around for about six seconds. It'll mm -hmm. start recording and then it'll start rendering the video, acting, act, adding the, the slow-mo and the overlay, the music and all that good stuff. It takes usually about 30 to maybe 40 seconds to do that part. Yes, Once okay. it does a playback, when the, the video starts doing the playback with all the effects, at that point, you can do the airdrop um, or text message. I would say try to take as much advantage uh, of the airdrop feature as possible. That's gonna save you guys lots of time. And if you guys have multiple people that came off the booth and they all have uh, iPhones, what you can do is just send it to one person, they'll, they'll, they'll grab it and then that person can airdrop it to the rest of the squad, which saves you guys time. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So we bought an iPhone just for this business. We're really? Android. So yeah. stuff like airdrop, it's not like it's foreign to us right now. Yeah. So. so what I'll do is when we go when we go to the process of uh, downloading a video, because I'm going to be sharing my screen, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to use the AirDrop feature. Okay. And then uh, we're recording this session. So if you guys uh, later on when I upload this video, uh, if you guys give me your consent, I can upload this video. That way you guys can go back on, for example, like YouTube and replay this video and play those parts that you feel like you just need repetition to kind of remember the, the steps to take. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So that sounds good. what I want to do right now, um, just because I feel like this is very important, I do want to go and, and create a touch picks event with you guys and, and, and do the, uh, go through the application itself. 
and record a video and take you to that process. I want to get that. I want to make sure we get that within the hour um, and then jump into whatever other questions we have. What do you guys think? Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys here. Please let me know if you can see the screen. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let me go touch picks here. Log in. I'm going to create an event here. I'm going to go create an event right up here. In this part, I'm just going to do it a little uh, as fast as I can because I know you guys already know how to do this. Am I correct? Yeah, we followed your video yeah, on okay. how to do it. All right, cool. <laughs> Sweet. So United States. If you guys have a question, boom, just go ahead and, and, and uh, hit me with that question as we're, as we're going through this process, okay? Okay. So remember, always use a rear camera of the iPhone. And the beep sounds, it's just a matter of preference, right? If we want yeah, to hear it or not. I, I, usually, I usually like the beep sound, even though sometimes I can't hear it over the DJ playing the music, which I hope there's a DJ because the DJ really helps you hype the yes. crowd and get the crowd going yes. on the platform. So I'm just going to use a slow-mo right over here. I use six seconds right here in this section. I moved it up to six. That way I get a nice lengthy video. And the mm -hmm. audio file, I'm sure you guys uh, kind of got familiar with that portion already. Kind of, but we're not going to add one. Yeah, it's not necessary yeah. because they can always add songs on TikTok, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, all that good stuff. All right. We just want to learn the basics. I didn't want to complicate it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, totally makes sense. So I'll put that just there. This, I'll leave blank. Company name. You guys can put your company name. I'm just going to put Canary. Oh, we noticed when we put the thank you, it seems to make it take longer. So, so to, I, zeroed, I zeroed it out. Um, yeah. The thank you you usually see on the external screen, not so much on the iPhone. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And, and then you guys will see my screen too while I'm doing that process. So you guys will get uh, like an actual visual of what I'm looking at when I'm doing these events using an iPhone. All right. And this like this, guys, like I'm just simplifying. And the motion trigger, uh, I'll go ahead and enable it. <clears throat> Um, since you guys are going to be using an external screen, I'm going to show you how it looks on the phone. Um, the external screen, it'll be, it'll be the same thing. The only difference is you'll be able to see it on the external screen. And then you want to have, a, as a Brent brought it up earlier, the QR code, you'll be able to see it on the screen itself. So we'll leave this enabled right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hit submit. Now we're going to go to designer. This is where I'm going to choose my template. All right. I'm going to go to uh, template right here. I like template number five a lot. That uh, gives me like most of the full body. And that's why I go with template number five. All right. Then I'm going to so we, we've heard you mention before that uh, several templates are like ideal for social media with five being, I guess, the first one. Um, is it five, five and four you were mentioning, I think? Yeah, I, I like uh, five and, and four. I like four because it's, it's a nice wide view of everything. That's when you actually get to capture a lot of the background because it's in landscape mode. And if you do uh, with time get, for example, like cold sparkles or fog machines with lights, and there's a lot going on as far as production goes in the background, it's great yeah. to use this template and maybe a combination of number five as well. Uh, it, it just really depends what you guys want to capture. For me, because right now the trend is TikTok and Instagram still a, a huge uh, social media application that gets uh, used by you know all different types of ages and demographics and Facebook as well. The dimensions for slow-mo number five is really compatible with almost any app that you can think of because it's, it's, the, it's the longer vertical um, image, right? And yes. uh, here, uh, number four, five, four, this is more like a uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook. That's all I could think of right now, but it is the entire video. So this, this does look good in that sense. If you want to promote on YouTube, which I highly recommend you guys do, uh, because it's free to promote on YouTube. You just put all your company's information and with the right tags, and the city you're in, and, and by time, over time, that's gonna help you guys out a lot. Please do that.
as much as possible. Um, okay, so template number five is what I'm going to go ahead and add right here. Okay. And it's adding the template. And I'm going to wait till this uh, finishes. There it goes, template added. Now to confirm that uh, it actually went through, I'm going to go to events here. And here it is, Brent. I'm going to go ahead and this little overlay here. Even though we didn't add an overlay, uh, this is the actual one, the size that we want right here. Okay. Nice. So now I'm going to plug my phone in. Okay, you guys are about to see my phone screen in a few seconds here. Okay. All right, so I'm coming over to touch picks. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go where it says activate event, which I'm sure you guys have probably done already, right? Yes. yes. So I'm going to go to activate event. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Brent's. I'm going to open up uh, Brent's one. Where, where are we at? Right there. The QR code. All right. It recognized the event. And then going to be setting up the event for us i'm going to go over this application with you guys too because i want you to make i want to make sure you guys have these uh this set up to the, the best settings okay okay so as soon as this loading thing here takes place we're going to go into the little icon here on the on the top left the three little lines some people call it a hamburger icon um we'll do that together in a few oh, okay minutes. i see that now okay <laughs> <laughs> the, the top left yeah it, it get uh, it's not very noticeable, but yeah. So let me go ahead and if I can remove it off of Wi Fi. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and that's that's what it looks like when I tap uh, tap on the top left there. I'm gonna go to settings, live view background. I'm gonna go ahead and that's gonna stay selected. Do you guys see that right here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Countdown. Uh, I like it at three seconds. You know, so the countdown basically is once it acknowledges that the the that it's moving, the phone is is a motion trigger. So when it sends us the motion, it'll start that countdown, and this is what it means. It'll be a three second countdown. So this is the part where you probably guys see me on a video where I go action because in my mind when it starts moving, I count down three, two, one, and then I know it's recording. Okay. So right here, it's very important where it says compress. It should always at least be at high quality. Okay, so high quality. Sometimes you guys will notice that when you go into your application, it'll be on uh, medium quality or low quality. Always double check to make sure it's in high quality or ultra high quality. I tried going back and forth between these two, could not, could, didn't see the difference as far as uh, how, how clear they were coming out and how crisp they were coming out. Okay, so yeah. high quality, please. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to scroll down. Look, uh, I'm going to look for some more important. Uh, here we go. This is another important section here. Now, autofocus. Okay, I'm sorry. Was that settings? Yeah. Yeah. So the, we're okay, still in sorry. settings. And right here at the top, um, Clarice, you see where it says mm -hmm. camera? I do. Yeah. So what I'll do is keep an eye up here. I'm going to go ahead and just go through the numerous ones there is, okay? Okay. okay. That way, that way, you guys uh can see that every time I hit the right arrow on my phone, these are all the settings that are presented to us. This, here's where we started. So I'm gonna hit the right arrow on the top, on the very top. I'm gonna hit this arrow. That takes me to the printer. I'm gonna keep on hitting that right arrow. That takes me to camera. Okay. So now that I'm on camera, the autofocus, I'm gonna leave as is. It's under continuous focus. The slow mo speed. I usually leave it at 60 frames per second. I've talked to TouchPick's technical support before. They said, oh, you can move it to 120 frames per second, and it's supposed to come out smoother. Like I said, it, it didn't make a very big difference. It does make a difference if I record a YouTube video and I switch my regular camera to 120 frames per second versus 60 frames per second. So I leave it at 60 frames per second. However, if you guys, what, what type of iPhone did you guys end up uh, getting, Clarice? Uh, 13 pro the 13 max pro? Yeah. the pro max oh you guys really went all out okay so yeah <laughs> you, guys can, you guys can test it with the 120 frames per second the 13 pro max has a very very uh, strong processor 
So you guys should get good quality even at 120 frames per second. I'm gonna leave it at 120 frames per second, okay guys? Okay. Right there. A lot of people, what they do is when they go to lens type, they go to ultra wide. Okay, so so if I go to ultra wide, keep keep an eye on this here, it's gonna change. You see that? Here, I'll go back to wide and it's gonna capture less. See how it zoomed in? Yeah. Uh, I see that. Okay. Yeah. So for me, guys, I don't use ultra wide when I, cause I noticed when I use ultra wide, it gives me too much of a grainy of uh, video and it's not crisp and clear versus when I leave it at regular, like wide, it comes out really clear and the resolution and everything looks a lot nicer. Now, because you guys have a 13 pro max, you might want to experiment with the lens type and switch, make a video with wide and then ultra wide and see if you guys lost any quality by switching to ultra wide okay now um i'm recording this session as i mentioned earlier so if you guys just kind of want to focus on the screen remember that you guys uh, will have access to this session so you guys can okay. can come back and circle back and, and um cover anything you guys feel like covering my throat was bothering me so those relief i'm also. writing notes like i'm in school sorry yeah i know <laughs> I, I noticed and i'm thinking like i don't want you to be nervous and like uh, what am I gonna mean like that video this video is gonna be for you guys when it gets compressed and everything I'll send that your uh, your way no problem okay so that's that's the biggest one here for camera in the camera section which is slow mo speed and lens type so I'm gonna leave my lens type on wide and I'm gonna leave, I'm a, I, I switch the slow mo speed to 120 frames per second all right all right the next thing is uh, photo effects I don't mess with that here um, I leave everything as is because the more you guys simplify things, the less things can go wrong, plus the faster the video will render. So in this case, I'm going to leave video effects as is. You guys can always experiment by hitting add effects and going with the beautifier, with the bounce one, with the CRT. And these are all filters. Okay. These are all filters. If you guys want, we can try one out, but let's try a regular, let's do a regular one first. And, and then we'll, we'll add one. So you guys can, see, or you guys can do that. Um, in the comfort of your own home uh, that way it doesn't eat up into our, our, our session because I want to make sure I cover the important stuff here with you guys for so the TV okay. session here um, I would turn on if I had a TV the external monitor which is I stopped taking with me to events just because it it somewhat slows me down uh, and it's just more stuff to pack into the SUV or a smaller van yeah mm -hmm. so I hit oh, you see oh sorry Go, go ahead, Brent. I was say, um, like, excluding the, the screen, you pretty much get, like, the same response. Because, uh, you know, in my line of thinking, I was, um, if they actually see it on the screen, they'll probably get them more hype or want to get more involved. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, so I, I like, I love their, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and close that app and come back to it and then check the settings and see what, how, it, how it got stuck for a little bit, guys. Uh, yeah, it, it just it just happens sometimes. Uh, going back to your question, Brent, it it's a beautiful thing when you see them look at the external monitor and see their reaction. But the cool part is that you get the same exact reaction when they come around the 360 booth as your phone is on the actual mount and it's rendering the video. As soon as the video pops up, you'll get the same uh, the same expression from them, just because okay. they still see it. Um, maybe okay. it's on a bigger monitor but they see it on the phone. And for me, uh, I, I have to do trade-offs because keep in mind that I've added a lot of extra equipment to make my production stand out, which means I added extra tripods, extra lights, extra fog machines and all that good stuff. So yeah. I, can, I had to kind of like say, okay, David, you have to give this up in order to gain that and things like that. Okay. So, yes, sir. So I'm going to go back to settings, just make sure that everything stayed in place. I'm going to uh, select TV session again, just to see if I can, if that happens again. In order to use a TV AirPlay photo, we need to download more sources. This will take, oh, that's why. It's, it needs to download more sources. In your case, you do want to move forward and download whatever sources you need to make it compatible with your AirPlay, okay, guys? But because I'm not okay. using an external TV, um, I'm not going to be downloading anything. So that's what it was doing earlier. Okay. So we noticed with, like, the motion, sometimes it doesn't pick up that it's in motion. It'll, like, spin for some time before the countdown goes off. 
the trigger, the, the motion. Okay, so it'll move. And then when it moves, it doesn't start the, it doesn't start the countdown right away. Is that what you're saying, Chris? No, it'll start like a few seconds, not all the time, but sometimes it'll like start like five, 10 seconds after. Yeah, a slight delay. Yeah. It's all, yeah. Hmm. You know, touch picks, I, I haven't seen it here on their menu. There's another app I'm exploring. I haven't really talked about it much because I haven't, I kind of want to master something before I put it out there. That way, when questions arise, I know how to answer them. But uh, Luma Booth has a feature where it allows you to calibrate how much motion there is on the arm so that in, the trigger is consistent. I haven't seen it here on touch picks. It only gives you motion trigger and that's pretty much it. You, you see that on there? I see, yes. Yeah, so maybe your arm is so smooth it doesn't even acknowledge that it's moving. Where, where did you guys get your booth from? We got it from Revel Spin. We spent way too much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the, Revel back Spin. in 2021 yeah Re revel spin uh, from what i understand is their 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 booths are very they're, they're good quality they're good quality of booths so when it spins there's not too much shakiness going on or too much of a jolt right it's a very it, it starts Correct. off very smooth right and i think because it starts off so smooth Correct. that's the reason why you guys are might be getting that slow start but the cool yeah. thing it's a pro max so you guys can actually see the screen when it does a countdown right Yes. All right. So this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to hit the slow-mo there. And I'm going to just move my phone a little bit to trigger that. And then I'm going to record, record. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this part right here, uh, depending on your <clears throat> signal, wireless carrier signal, your coverage, and the type of phone you're using, it could be as fast as 30 seconds or sometimes as slow as a little over 40 seconds. You guys have the Pro Max and it's brand new. So the process yes. is pretty quick. I have a standard 13, the very, very basic 13. And this is where- It was we're... slow at first. It was because our screen kept getting dark. We didn't put it on. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. So. I'm gonna show you, as soon as this video downloads, I'm gonna show you a few settings to use when you guys go out to events, okay? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So it's probably been closer to like getting to 30 seconds here. All right, so that's taking place. So I noticed that on my screen, it says adjusting video but on my actual screen on my phone, it's already showing the replay. So I'm gonna hit next and then see exactly. Yeah, it froze on this end here. I'm gonna refresh it for you guys, come back. That's something that can happen to us. I, I, think, we just... I think this is more uh, this, this particular connection um, because I'm using, I'm sharing my iPhone screen on my laptop through Zoom. So I think okay. that's why, but I'm going to go to the gallery right here. And as you guys can see here, this video is 25 seconds long, right? Yes. Which is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that video. And then right here is where the airdrop, you would press this airdrop right here. Okay. So right. I press the airdrop. I have a, I'll go ahead and turn on this iPhone here. So I'm going to hit the, this, uh, this airdrop. And then your the person you want to send the airdrop to, let them know to turn their airdrop on. And how do you do that? I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay. So the client walks up to you with their iPhone, and they're saying, "Can you can you please send it to my phone?" Yeah, sure, no problem. There's different ways you can access airdrop. One is going at the very top and putting in airdrop the word airdrop, and then it'll take you to airdrop general right there. That's one way. Okay, takes you to airdrop and make sure that it's always accepting from everyone. That way they pop, they, their phone pops up on your phone and you can select their phone to airdrop. Another way of doing it is if you guys end up on the actual main settings of the iPhone, you guys go into settings, then you guys go into general and within general here at the top, you'll see airdrop. That's another way of getting, going into airdrop. And there's a 
Believe it or not, there's a third way of doing it. This is just iPhone. There's just so many ways to do things. If you if you scroll down from from up here, you scroll down. Like say you're at the very top of the screen and you scroll down like this, and you hold down this this uh, button here, this Wi-Fi. There you you can select it down here as well. So there's just multiple ways you can get to the AirDrop feature. All right, so. Um, Clarice uh, brought up a point about as far as a phone going into a black screen. Yes, I experienced that myself. And sometimes to this day, I forget to, to change the setting for every event. Here are two things to do before every event, guys. Go into your settings on your iPhone. All right, see where it says display and brightness right here. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Display and brightness. Where it says auto lock while you're at the event go to never that way it doesn't turn off on you during the event and make sure that um, your battery is full when you get to the event that way that your battery will last you the entire event even though the screen won't turn off so it doesn't interrupt yeah. your production okay i'm going to switch it back to one minute here <clears throat> the next thing you guys can also do i know that a lot of people don't have that phone number because you guys just got the phone to for the business but in the future, if you decide to use that phone and, and, and decide to share that number as the contact number for the company, but you don't want people calling and interrupting your session, you guys can always go to this little icon right here where it says focus mm. and then do not disturb. That way, while you're shooting the event, no calls can come through and interrupt your production. See, that's good. Okay. So we don't have to get another phone. We were like, we need exactly. another phone. So then, yeah, that's oh. what I was thinking too. <laughs> when I first got my i12 mini, I said, man, what if people call me during the evening and they interrupt, you know, and, and say, for example, I'm recording the bride and the groom on the freaking platform and a call comes in. That would be terrible, you know? So yeah. I realized like, oh, the do not disturb. This will this will keep from any calls coming into the phone. So, yeah, like I said, guys, well, you guys will have access to this video so you can circle back and get familiar with these settings. OK. Yeah. Now, earlier I said I wanted to show you guys something that's very important. So remember, guys, we went into touch picks and we recorded that one video. Yes. Right? This video right here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So check this out. On your iPhone, while your event is still opened and it hasn't been closed, if you go over to files, scroll down until you see touch picks. So remember, touch picks, eight items, the gallery. Go to, let's see, which one is it? Go to the non-rendered, non here you go, non-rendered. This one right here. See how it says 32.4 megabytes? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a larger file because it's a raw file. So what you guys can do next is you can select this file here and then on the bottom right, right here, can you guys see where the mouse is at? This little yeah. button there, you go to save video. Okay, so now this means that that video that you just saved, when you go back to touch picks, you close the event and then you send the link to your client. You have that video, that particular video into your, you have it in your gallery. Let me see, hopefully. Here it is. So see how this one's 25 seconds with the boomerang effect, the slow-mo effect. And this is the raw one here. Oh, it's only six seconds. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's still it's still um it still has those slow mo effects, but it comes out extra clear and it shows six, six seconds even though it's not. It's the raw file. It's something that you guys need um to use when you guys are promoting your business. That way your videos come out really clear when you're when you have these raw files on your Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and stuff like that. So when we record the videos, they're going to automatically save in our in the phone that we're yeah. using. So the video that we just recorded together is right here automatically. This is this is the one that we did together uh, in the beginning of the conversation. This one here, I had to manually go in to um, to download to my gallery. That way, when I close the event, this video is available to me. When I close my event, this video is automatically going to be in my gallery already. 
Okay. So for every all the videos that you guys are going to be shooting on the day of the event, it's going to automatically be saved to your iPhone's gallery, which is great. Um, because it's like, it's, it's almost as, as, as if you guys had a backup, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So the next thing now is any, any questions before I close this, this, this event here on touch picks. So any, okay. Any of the videos that we want to use, we have to make sure to save it before we close the event. The raw files. Yes. The, the okay. standard videos automatically end up in your gallery. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And you guys will notice, say, for example, tonight, you guys do another run or Friday, Thursday, you guys do another run. You'll notice mm -hmm. that all the galleries that's going to be showing on your TouchPix app right here. I'll, I'll go back and uh, show you guys what I'm talking about. Can you guys still see my phone screen? Probably not, right? Yeah. You could? The album. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this section, I have the entire gallery right here. Oh, there we are. Okay. So yeah, this entire section will be full of the videos you guys recorded, right? This gallery right here will reflect those videos on your main phone's gallery. Okay. Yeah. The raw ones are the ones you guys have to manually go in there and download, okay? Okay. Cool. Now, any any more questions? That was a good question. I know it's a little confusing, but that, that's definitely a good question. It's just when you say raw, that means to actually like it's, compact it's an it. It's un uncompressed file. So it the quality hasn't been compressed to a point where you sacrifice quality it's a raw file meaning it hasn't gone through any compression whatsoever and that's why it takes up more space in your phone because it's a bigger file higher quality okay okay oh we're showing better that's yeah, it's probably adjusting um okay so that's that and then next thing is i'm going to close the event here um and you guys will probably already know how to do that right so I'm just going to go to yes to close it and then scan a QR code. Exactly. And then I'm, and I want to show you guys how to send that to the client. Okay. Do you guys know how to do that already? That as well already? No. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to cover that in a few seconds. Okay. All right. So let me see. So, okay guys. So I'm going to the top left here and I'm going to go close event just like that. Yes. Now we're going to pull up a, uh, Brent's code right there. Cool. Now, right here, it says delete photos and videos from device. No, <laughs> because remember those videos that are in your gallery are backup videos. So it's good to have those just in case anything happens. So what this is saying is, okay, you're finished with the event. Let's go ahead and free up space on your phone. Would you like us to delete the photos and videos from device? This sh should not be checked uh, because that means that if you if if you don't check this, that means that those videos that are in your gallery stay in your gallery okay. on your on your iPhone. Uh, if you okay. if you select yes, those videos will get wiped out from your phone, but the client will mm -hmm. still have access to the videos in their gallery. But I like playing it safe, so I'd rather keep them on my phone because then later on I can also use them to market my services as well like pick the best coolest videos right yeah. so make sure that this is not checked okay guys yeah. as far as google drive dropbox unchecked right here it says web gallery one and then then the app gallery one so one for one that that's that's accurate that's what we want and then right here where it says continue let me go ahead and open up my phone so this process is complete i'm going to go ahead and hit continue and there, we're, we're ready for the next event, the next Saturday or Friday. Okay, now that's complete. Now let's go over to touch picks and let me go ahead and share my computer screen here with you guys. All right, cool. So you guys have a view of my screen? Yes. All right, beautiful. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over events because the, you know, it was a beautiful night, it was a success. And either you guys got home early and you still have enough energy to send the client the link. What you guys can do is you guys can come right over here where it says Brent. And then you guys are going to go to gallery right over here. Click on gallery. And this is the video that we recorded. We're going to go to public URL. Okay. 
and it's gonna it's gonna uh, produce a post. And so this right here usually is filled with videos, all the videos from the event. Right. Next thing we want to do is we want to email this right. We want to email this link, and I usually email this link to myself first to my business. Okay, so I'm gonna email it to Canary Capital Rentals at gmail.com. Did I spell this correctly? Canary Capital Rentals. Okay, send. Okay, email has been sent. I'm gonna go into my email box right here, guys. But this is another thing too that I think um, I found a shortcut to. So for example, like you see this uh, link up here, guys? Yes. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna cut it. Then I'm gonna go into my Wix here, because I'm going to send I'm gonna send Clarice uh, that link. Yep, got it. Right, okay, cool. Now please do me a favor and then scroll down on that email and hit that link for me, please. Got it. Yeah, so does that link, did it take you to that gallery? Yes, it did. All right, so it's, it's really truly that simple. Yeah. I'm gonna hit and send because guys, you wanna automate, automate this, uh, service as much as possible and streamline it as much as possible so it gets to a point where you guys are just chilling like you guys are right now as dispatch managers and you guys have a, <laughs> yeah. and you guys have a team running your 360 booths or standard uh, photo booths and however you want to scale your business at the end of the day you got to find out ways to really take yourself out of the equation as far as being there physically but it's yeah. also important and it's a beautiful process to be in the the in in the moment and in the infrastructure and really understanding the whole entire process so that you guys can become great teachers to your upcoming and uh, future employees um but that's the software part of touch picks now we still we still have a uh, time to cover some more ground um what else can we knock out of the park guys okay so we're uh, we pretty much answered most of my was there something it was more so like canva but i don't think we have enough time to get yeah, into so, that so like, canva, i feel like i know enough to just yeah, canva, something. canva is uh is fun but canva in the beginning is intimidating because it's you really it's, you become a graphic designer in a sense so, yeah. <laughs> so, so let me show you something guys that i think is, is is this part if you get this part down then you really can't go wrong and i'll show you guys okay so okay. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen here. Uh, you, you guys made it here, right? On Canva where you just get this blank page, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, I, if I'm correct, the dimensions for template number five are this. If you go to this top left and you go to resize, the dimensions like, are 19, is it 19? It's 1072 by 1920, I think that's it. I think you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Nice, good job, man. I should know this by now, right? Um, so I kept doing it the reverse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Th that happened to me <laughs> way too many times. So now you know that this is how much space you have to work with. And then if you go to elements, when you go to elements, say we're celebrating, let's say Hawaiian, maybe like a Hawaiian party, right? Then Hawaiian yeah. party, it's gonna give you uh, stuff right away. So then I can put this, I can take this to the middle, resize it. Put that right there this is just really quick to show you guys how um how easily automatically it just looks better than what we were <laughs> so what i mean by i keep having a screen pop up and it's getting in the way of me placing the items so are you using did you sign up for the pro version or are you using the free version yes but i'm thinking it's the laptop i'm using that's oh, the probably it. okay so this is basically here this is here uh, the next thing I want to do is maybe just to, for the sake, let's go ahead and just type in uh, cool deal. All right, so this right here, I can go right here to the top left and uh, choose a different font just to make it stand out. Go to effects and maybe like the, the neon, but change it to a more uh, a colors to match some of these colors right down here, right? If I go to effects. I want to, oh, that's cool right there. Cool deal. Okay. And say this is like in front 
of these flowers, right? Uh, I click on this again or on the flowers and then I can go to position and I want to bring those flowers forward. See, but now I have to move this to the side because it's covering my cool deer right there. That's Canva for you. Uh, it's super easy. Sometimes, sometimes you get a client that wants specific colors and it, sometimes you get a bridezilla, put it that way. It's like a Motown <laughs> theme. It's a hard theme to look for. There's not a lot of content here for Motown. Yeah, Motown meaning like funk and, and, and like DJs. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. so then what you can do is something for like, like that, then you can do something like, let me see. If I type in hip hop, then you can start getting like break dancers. You can get disco balls. You can get boom box speakers and kind of put them here. Get, get creative, tilt this to the side make this a little bit smaller, put it here, get rid of that, you know, like, and, and then just start, you just let your creative juices flow. Sometimes you gotta walk away from the, uh, yeah. from Canva <laughs> and come back with a fresh memory, with a fresh yeah. mind was what I meant to say. And you know, you guys will get it. And it's sometimes one of you guys, this is gonna be your strength for one of you guys, this is gonna be your weakness. <laughs> It's, it's just because yeah. we're all so different and gravitate towards different things and stuff like that. Uh, and then most importantly, when you're ready to use this for your event, remember guys, when you go to share, make sure you download this, but you download it as a transparent background. Okay. Yeah, I made that mistake. Oh, so already. you got this. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are like practicing this. That's the best thing you can do right now while you decide you know, where, where you're going to buy or while it's in the photo booth is on its way. This is exactly what you should be doing. You should be exploring the software, the tools that you're going to be using every single week. That way you guys can start popping out these overlays rather quickly and uh, also <coughs> set up your events on TouchPix really quick as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. This I'm, glad, helps. I'm glad I was able to share Canva with you really quick. Uh, yeah, use elements. Elements will help you cover a lot of ground quickly. But then again, guys, also want to share with you that when it comes to making an overlay, the less, the better. The reason I say that is because if you have too much going on here on the sides, here on the corners, and you go with this template, then this speaker and this guy right here is blocking real estate when it comes to capturing all the action that's going to be going here for the attendees. So the smaller the overlay, the, the, the minimal is better. Okay. Because then you capture more of the actual event versus these little things blocking um, and making your, your, your real estate area tighter, smaller, more compressed, which is something that I don't like. I like capturing the attendees yeah. as much as possible. I think that was my issue, feeling like I had to fill up all the space. Oh no, the less the better, trust me. <laughs> And if you guys look around uh, 360 videos here and there, when you guys see those videos that have a bunch of stuff going on, you'll notice that there's only a very small portion of the video that actually shows the attendees and doesn't really yeah. show. And it's not the most attractive, coolest production in my opinion. However, if you come across other videos, um, maybe I can give you a quick, like these balloons right here, right? Mm. See how these balloons come in too much? Yeah. yeah. Her face could have been showing right here, but did you see how that got in the way? Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what I mean. Try to reduce the amount of, uh, try to minimize clutter. Um, even though it does look nice, uh, it, it takes its toll on the production. So just wanted to share that with you guys because I think this this is something that gets overseen. I definitely had balloons. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My so. practice, okay. So you can make the balloon smaller, all right? Or put them like in the very, very corners. Uh, go ahead here. I'm back. And now there's okay. over 2,000 360 booth operators in this Facebook community. And so a lot of people go into the community and they're asking questions and people that have been in the industry for now for like two months plus can actually share some of that information with the newer 360 booth operators which is, I think, a good place for you to really plug into, especially barely starting off. Um, that way you guys get more support as well. Um, I'll share that link with you here. And you, you're going to have questions, that's for sure. Uh, post those questions on the community 
And um, like I said, there's a lot of 360 booth operators that are new. There's some that are seasoned, and there's some that have been around longer than I have. And everyone's there to support each other. Okay. Yeah. We appreciate uh, the assistance, the time, the information. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, this will definitely help with our growth and, you know, us achieving the goals in which we set for ourselves. And, um, you know, we are truly thankful and grateful. Yeah, I think it is a pleasure working with you guys. What uh, what state are you guys located in? I, I, I kind of, I didn't look into that. Um, Southern California. So we're like in the Orange County, borderline Orange County. LA County area. Okay, good. Both of those areas are great places. There's uh there's money there. There's uh in Orange County, there's uh, affluent places in Orange County and LA, there's a ton of parties. LA is known for the party industry. So once you guys get the ball rolling, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to have events and it's going to get to a point where you guys might have to expand or maybe you guys want to just keep it simple. But yeah, those are two good areas. Orange County was an area that I thought maybe I want to take on. But quite honestly, it's uh, I, I've started to realize I, I'm out here in San Bernardino. So drive, it's a drive. Yeah, the yeah. drive, <laughs> it, it really takes, it, it eats up your profit. So if you guys can keep it close to home within maybe like the max 20 mile radius max, uh, it's, it's just more efficient guys, you know, cause remember that even though we're entrepreneurs and we have, a bit, we're building businesses, the quality of life also matters a lot because that's, that's something that we're trying to retain as a quality of life. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to download this video, compress it and then upload it because it's a lengthy video. It's about an hour long. It's going to take forever to upload on YouTube. So just okay. like set the expectation. I do believe and I am confident that uh, it'll be up on YouTube probably within the next four hours. It's going to, it really takes that long. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Well, cool. Enjoy the rest of your day and thank you so much. You too. Right, like thank it. you. Appreciate it. You're welcome.